Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea. Today we're going to be having a look at a player who recently came back from his military service. It's going to be Gumiho, a man that loves to make it happen as well. I was actually sending out an early SCV here. So I'm most likely going to be going for... Well, if we're going to not see a second SCV send out, it's going to be a proxy reaper. Not the worst deal here. On a map like Romanticide. Of course you can build your barracks somewhere over here. You have this area to jump up on. I see Zest already actively scouting with his first probe. We'll see if he's also going to go to the right side. Definitely seems to be the case. Um, the question is will he return back towards the middle? Or is he going to go out on the right? Oh my god. Gumiho knew. This is prepared. Okay. I was gonna say it makes no sense to build it up here. Most of the time, when people scout towards the right side, they're also gonna go towards the far right side to check, hey, um, what your opponent is doing. But Zest, no. Zest is just gonna scout around his base, the closest by locations, and then it's gonna play, I would say, Nexus before Core, but no, it's actually gonna be Core before Nexus here. So, even though he doesn't scout, usually when players don't scout, they play Nexus before Core. Because even with a core before Nexus, with a no scout, you're still gonna end up losing to builds like a 2 Rex Reaper, or 2 Rex uh, Marines. This comes in at a weird angle. I wonder if Zest noticed that. I think he might have noticed that, but I mean, at this point, there's not much you can do about it. Second gas will get taken, and we'll see the Reaper uh, pop out soon. We'll be able to jump up here, the path towards redemption. The path towards kills is going to, ooh, going to be relatively short. Look at him. He's already sending a unit here. I think Zest knows. And I think Zest wants to wall this off, but he's not going to be in time. Doesn't quite have the money, but he definitely knew. Oh, no. Not going to be able to get it. First Stalker gets Chrono Boost. Second Stalker already queued up as well. There's no battery on the low ground. Reaper. Ooh, this bunker is in a really bad position here. I'll explain to you guys why that is later. That is, Reaper will still just be able to pop out of uh, what was that that must have been a, a massive miscommand why is the reaper going back home he just pulled a bunker and then okay very odd decisions with the reaper movement first of all sending the reaper back in well it was completely fine to be Send into the bunker. The reason why this bunker is so bad is because it's too close to the high ground. So you could just put your stalkers on the high ground and shoot at the bunker for free. Even the repair couldn't be done because the any point of the bunker was in range of stalkers. So a really weird opener here out of uh, out of Gumiho. And we're gonna be following this up with well, what is this? A mine drop perhaps? Yeah, maybe a mine drop of army. Okay, so close mines. That's an almost dead reaper, but not quite. Armory is being built here. Well, Zest is hunting for that reaper. He's going to get it. <laughs> he was he was trolling him a little bit there, just moving right next to him, saying, "Hey, I I know what you're doing, buddy. You you can you know that I know. You know that I know." We have the classic Zest Hellion Pylon here. This Pylon is only useful if your opponent plays Hellions. If they don't play Hellions, it doesn't really do much of anything. This probe's gonna go try to spot for a drop. Um, is barely going to see it, actually. That's extremely nice, because Blink wasn't here yet, which means that these Stalkers need to be in position to find this Medivac. Gumio can go towards the dead space. Should pop in here into the natural first, yeah. Really should drop one. I'm gonna go for a double drop. I don't mind it. There's no robo here yet, which means this natural base is not going to be mining for a long, long time. He gets an armory only to get a single mine drop out. Odd decision, but it's a decision we have to respect. I kind of like Gumiho's position, but I would have liked it even more if there was a second mine drop heading into the main base at this point. Zest would be, well, honestly, pretty dead. I'm gonna lose two more workers. Oh, what? I honestly haven't been able to catch Gumiho on making a good move in this game. I feel like the build order hasn't been bad, but the movement of the unit so far and the decision made 
with the units has been really mediocre just really mediocre and perhaps i'm being a little bit harsh on the guy that recently came back out of the army Ooh, actually gonna be going into mech i was hoping for this already i was hoping for a little mech game of course but Especially on Romantic side, I mean, it is completely possible. The armory, I guess, also was a little bit of a giveaway. Raven is going to get sent out here. 45 workers against 36. 30C is about as quick as the third Nexus. I think Zest is going to be completely fine with the position he's currently in. He obviously would have preferred not having lost a couple of workers, but it's not that bad. Look at the vision that he has, by the way. Real nice... Uh, not a ring of fire, but a ring of vision around this base here. We see this raven pop in. I think Zest also saw that. Zest is going to be waiting until it comes out. I'm not even going to be able to throw down anything here. I mean, the raven also saw that there was an observer there, right? They can see each other. So, again, a little bit of a weird move here out of Gumiho, but um, he's alive. He has a worker count that seems okay-ish. Down 10 isn't the end of the world if you have triple mules. Each mule is responsible for about three and a half workers. So end of the day, this is gonna be pretty close in income. Still should be slightly ahead for Zest. Zest went up to four gas already. He's gonna be getting into charge as well. Now that's interesting. We've seen a couple of different variations out of Zest himself responding to this. So most things that he does revolve around a big stalker count and i'm talking a huge stalker count okay just massing stalkers on relatively high mineral eco while staying on low gas eco four maybe three gas only attack upgrades running around with 10 12k blink stalker eventually tacking into some disruptors and eventually going into carriers like those are the transitions that says really really likes to do because with high stalker count it's extremely easy to deny fifth bases a fourth base might be a little bit harder but even that is possible imagine you have 25 30 stalkers blinking over this type of stuff or blinking on top of planetaries just can be super powerful however this time we see you know, actually see a high stalker count already we also saw charge is being researched and a fourth base is being taken and Zest basically is set up on two sides here. I wouldn't mind if he adds a prism into the mix as well. If he adds a prism into this mix, um, he'd basically have three sides covered. So he can potentially start doing some damage into the main base. He can he can catch any unit that comes out there. So any potential Hellion harass or any move out towards an extra base is all possible here. Good vision. Zest's vision tends to be quite. He also start a couple of cannons, which might seem weird because he has full vision of his opponent. But in case of a drop, you still just want to have it. You know, I don't mind it. Really. Managed to actually snipe the sensor tower there. It's going to be going into storm. This is something that we've seen trap to before. I don't think I've quite seen it out of Zest yet. To be fair, I haven't seen every single game that Zest played in his life, but. I'm, I'm coming pretty close when it comes to tournament games, so he's going to actually be going for a prism drop against mech. So storm against mech is going to be the the answer here for the Korean proto. He's already taking a fifth base as well, and he's right now seeing... Ooh, nice scan, doesn't see anything. He's barely out of range. Let's see what Zest decides to do. You could say, hey, this is an opportunity to found, but I think Zest might see that slightly different. Because I don't think there is an opportunity to found here yet. I think he's gonna need more units. He's gonna need more stuff. Uh, this side is pretty much locked up right now. It's gonna be, what, two tanks, a bunker, a turret. There's a semi-turret ring here. Not a full turret ring, but a semi-turret ring. There's some turrets here as well. And there's two Vikings. So potential prison harass has been shut down. Stargate is going to be the uh, proposed solution here for Zest for the problem that is the mech. Very rapid, very, very rapid transition. Nine minutes in, we see the Stargate go down. Wouldn't mind seeing some extra gases and maybe five, six extra workers as well. Plus one air weapons gets researched immediately. 
The scary thing here for Zest is, is that he's really reliant on Storm to zone out this army if Gumio ever decides to push out. Honestly, at this point, I've been watching uh, tanks being sieged up for the past five minutes. I'm kind of losing hope that anything ever is going to happen in this game. I was like, oh, nice, a Gumio game. We might get to see Mech against TVP. And now the reality of watching a Mech game is kicking in again. It's <laughs> not a lot happened. Uh, another orbital command going down here. Fusion core in combination with two starports and ship up level one. A second fusion core. Okay. Now that is something I have never seen before because it makes no sense. But it's happening nonetheless. You know. Did he just cancel it? I oh, yeah, just canceled it and went for a fifth starport instead. Okay, so it's gonna be five starport battle cruiser as a transition. It's a mass battle cruiser out of mech. And Zest is opting for carriers here. Now, you could say that is a little bit silly, especially because Zest has full vision of what his opponent is doing. He sees the fusion core, he sees the starport being added. He could have a look at the other starports as well, right? He could just go and look at that. He isn't. And in that case, he, oh, he might actually decide to go for something like Tempest. Because Tempest against Battlecruisers are really good. And carriers against Battlecruisers are good as long as you have way more carriers than the opponent has Battlecruisers. But if that's not the case, you're actually just going to lose most of the time. Because you get Yamato to death. We have vehicle plating level 2 on the way. We have ship weapons level 1 about to finish as well. As this is the first piece of action that... Uh, Kumiho is willing to uh, send out. Four carriers are already saving up. Two robos on the way as well, as well as a robo bay, dark shrine, potentially for some dark templar with blink, of course, or some dark templar without blink. Kumiho is uh, one of the more patient people in the world. Yeah. He really doesn't care about doing anything. He is practically playing single player at this point. Just building orbital commands, floating his next command. Perhaps he expands like every two minutes or so. Like that's his goal, you know? So the first two minutes you have your number one base. Then at like 150 you build your second one. Then at four you build your third base. Well, in that case he would be way behind actually. Man, I'm really bad at counting. I actually thought this was gonna work out. Is it like 12 minutes? Five times two makes a lot of sense. Um, Forgetting that also the first is already down. Oh, aggressive fling forward here. This is a fight that looks awful here. For Zest, he wants to snipe this base, but it can lift. Holy crap, that was a terrible fight. Only down 300 uh, minerals, though, total, in units lost. These battle cruisers get spotted. Let's see if they actually get spotted, or if Zest right now is too busy looking at this drop. Seems to me like he's a little bit too busy looking at this drop. The moment he starts looking at his opponent's base, though, you should be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, is he really gonna reveal your storm like this? No, okay, right. no the answer is yes. Loses a Templar as well to this, kind of painful. Okay, Mothership checks his opponent's base. Like, hey, what's happening here? Hasn't really seen the battle cruiser yet. I, I don't believe he has. Meanwhile, the battle cruisers are in the middle. Oh. Now he's seen it, for sure. Now he's seen it, for sure. Let's see if he has any response other than just straight up attacking into this. I think the answer is no. He's charging up his interceptors on this rock, so they don't need to come out anymore. And look at that damage output on the interceptors. A lot of the turrets going down immediately. I actually don't think he was aware of the battle cruisers. He looks kind of shocked. He looks kind of gobsmacked. Level 3 air weapons on the way. Mothership is about to finish as well. We have 7 battle cruisers against 11 carriers. Which means there's going to be 3 carriers shot at an instant by Yamato cannons. And then the rest of the fight still should be kind of okay for these for these battle cruisers. Plus 3 ship weapons not starting yet, by the way. Which is also an error here. Out of Umio. Oh, here come the Yamatos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boom, 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 boom. Miss target fires only damages three separate carriers before he manages to teleport out. We have a... I don't even know what this is. But it is here, so 
It is what it is. We have a tank run by as well coming out. I much would have preferred to see these battle cruisers used aggressively, by the way. So moving into a base to teleport back. That is usually how you want to be using your battle cruisers. Doesn't seem to be the case here for Gumiho. Gumiho is is kind of doing what he's been doing this entire game, and that's sitting at home and sending out units once he doesn't need them anymore. This is the most interesting way of playing Mac or playing Starcraft that I've ever seen. What do we have? We have eight battle cruisers. We're gonna go up to thirteen against ten carriers. I really think if you have an equal amount of battle cruisers to carriers, it's that the battle cruisers are just simply better. I really think that Zest needs to be careful. I have a strong belief that Zest needs to be careful here. These upgrades are crazy as well. Plus three vehicle plating. It's gonna help so much against these interceptors. Didn't want the Vikings anymore either. Oh, aggressive recall here out of Zest. Beautiful play. Is going to uh, be able to snipe this base in a rapid fashion. Yeah, that was quick. Very speedy. See, the Pants are trying to go for some aggressive scores, maybe. Like they are in that prison. Needs to be so careful, though. Zest needs to be so careful. Is it going to recall or is it just going to run away? It's going to run away. You have an aggressive scan. I mean, that's going to cost you. No? He doesn't want to do it. He does not want to do it. 13 battle cruisers against 10 carriers. You'd get 6 carriers before the fight even starts with your Yamato. Six carriers. There would be four left. You have almost three three ships. Like I, th I think this is a very scary push here. I like that Gumiho is going with everything actually, because then the stalkers also aren't really helping so much against these battle cruisers. Look at this army. This army is massive, absolutely huge. Gumiho just needs to target his Yamatos correctly. Two per carrier, not more than that. And he's just pushing forward. He says, oh, "All right, says you. You had your fun." You blinked into me thinking you could do anything. I don't think he can. He's so, so slow. Why is he not fighting? Can't you fight this? There is, oh, aggressive recall. No. Oh, oh, proxy nexus. Into an aggressive recall. I love this place so much, but he needs to be so careful. Look at all these Yamatos gonna go off, wait, three going down already. Oh, that's the first carrier going down. Now we're gonna need to see another recall. Can we recall away from Yamato? I don't think so. Oh, blinked on top of this. I think this is really bad here for Zest. I think he's going to lose everything. Yamato. So yeah, this is awful for Zest. Look at this, he's gonna lose literally every single carrier. These battle cruisers still alive. The prison will help out though with some reinforcements. And as there's no tanks here, these stalkers actually might be able to really contribute to this fight. But the battle cruisers are just too good. He can't recall out of this. Oh, Zest. This is not a good fight for you. This was not this was a little bit too aggressive. Look how slow they kill each other. Two massive battleships fighting. But yeah, the the, the battle cruisers. This fight could have happened over here already, and then Gumiho can just push through with his tank army. I really believe that Zest underestimated, or that Gumiho underestimated his army. This is a crap ton of reviews, by the way. Holy crap, this game makes no sense. For the first 15 minutes, nothing happened. Now we've been having unique action after unique action. I've never seen this crap before in my life. Now Gumiho is going to start doing what I was mentioning earlier. So what you do is you just fly across the map. With your, with your battle cruisers, you kill a base and then you teleport either to a different base to sacrifice their life or you teleport back home. And in order to combat this, you need insanely good vision on the map. Oh, this is kind of lucky. Here. Or for, yeah, for Zest actually. He does end up losing that, but he knows now, okay, there is, uh, there is battle cruisers going that way. Kumio actually is transitioning out of battle cruisers. It is... This is just the oddest game. I feel like he finally had 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 a leg up in this game, and now it's like, well, you you can't anymore. He's gonna keep hiding his battle cruisers. 
this base is extremely vulnerable if only Gumiho knew about it. He knows about this Nexus. Gumiho is actually going for the long con. He is just playing the slowest game that I've seen in my life. We have 12 mines on the map now, which could potentially be helpful against a... Uh, well, against a what, actually? I think against Tempest it wouldn't be too bad. He needs a teleport, buddy. Other side of the map? Where are you going? Just go kill this base and then go over here as well. If Zest can take this base, or not this base, and he can't take these either, I think Gumio's in a pretty okay-ish spot. He still needs to get a couple more trades like he has been getting. He's up 6k. And these Tempted are out. They don't actually have the Tectonic Destruction or whatever it's called. The, the big upgrade deals a crap ton of damage. You have five battle cruisers. Uh, finding a little base over here. I think a recall is ready. I'm not sure if you want to recall into battle cruisers, but you're not quite sure what to there. This is scary. This is scary. Okay. Aggressive blink forward. Here comes the mines. The mine flank. <laughs> oh no. Is this working? No way, right? Oh, big hits actually. Very big hits on all of these tempests. You can go again with the mines. You can chase. You can chase this. You can chase this. Go in. Yeah. No, go in. Yeah, you should go in. I really think you should go in. You have drilling claws, man. Mines are so cheap. You lost the battle cruiser now. But there's five more battle cruisers on the other side of the map, and having to uh, to kind of have a skirmish with these with these mines is super annoying because it takes so much time, and that's time that these battle cruisers uh, have extra to deal with your outside bases. I think that's really cool. I think these battle cruisers should already be going over here right now. Kind of, kind of using them, you know, like a sharking a little bit on the map. Multiple groups of battle cruisers. It makes it so difficult to fight. So, so difficult to fight. Right now we see that uh, Zest is hunting for these BCs. At the same time, Gumio is going to send these bad boys in. And I think that's going to be one dead BC at least. Second BC will get taken out. No, it won't. Gets home with a single HP. This mass battle cruiser strat is crazy. Now Thor transition coming in as well. Here comes the next round of battle cruisers. As this base is most likely going to get taken out. And it's not just going to be this base, because this base also isn't that well secured. I mean there's a couple of stalkers here. But the recall will need to be used. We still don't have tectonic destabilizers. That was the one I was looking for earlier. So these buildings take a little bit longer than perhaps they should. Thors are going to absolutely wreck these tempests if there are no disruptors in the neighborhood. And I think there are no disruptors in the neighborhood. What is the upgrade? Okay, we only have plus one vehicle weapons. That's not the greatest upgrade here for the Thors. Thors, of course, need to be using that uh, single target damage. Yep, there we go. I see uh, at least one of the Thors turning uh, into the correct one. There we go. Second one. So have two more Thors that aren't properly set up. Okay, that was a little bit too obvious, my friend. There was a uh, <laughs> an Oracle already on you, so... They did see it, right? They did see it. All of these mines are going to die for free right now. It's kind of painful, but more Thors are being built. And I think the correct answer here to these Thors is going to be Disruptor. Usually, Tempest Carrier Disruptor tends to be the end game composition against Mech. Disruptors to deal with the Thors, Tempest to deal with the Battle Cruisers, Carriers to deal with everything together. And then having good gateway count to be able to reinforce with stalls and move a lot of damage being taken here by these turrets. Uh, or well, by these units. Because of the turrets. Turrets, of course, with the high... Oh, we're gonna see another regret. I'm not a fan of this move. He's gonna go for it, isn't he? Okay. Prism gets in there as well. We'll see what he'll be capable of doing. But these Thors are going to start walking up. And that's a crap ton of Thors. There's a bunch of battle cruisers here as well. Can he still recall back home? He wants to. I don't think he can. He's going to get absolutely blasted here. Oh my god. Gumiho completely destroying this army of Zest in his main base once again. So far, every single time Zest has tried to, to do some aggressive move like this, it completely backfired. And once again, that is the case. Aggressive blink forward into these... Well, what are they? Just Archons? Oh, I thought for a second he was just going to blink straight into his opponent's base to go for the kill. That could have been a possibility. Don't forget that. 16 Stalkers being built at once. 16. 
That is a crap ton of gateway. Thor here will be able to help out a bunch. Just battle cruisers tend to not be great, but Thor with very high DPS against these stalkers will be able to help. We have 120 supply currently for Zest against the 190 of Gumio, and Gumio only on 38 workers as well. Zest still at 60, so right now Gumio almost tripling the army supply of his opponent. I think Gumio is going to push the victory here. I don't quite see what Zest can do. Gumiho comes back from the military as some of the most atrocious early game that I've seen in a long time. Then decides to do nothing for 15 minutes and then starts putting in the work. Battlecruisers flying around like their life depends on it. This base is going to get taken out. And now we're going into, into base trade mode here for Zest. Zest is moving across the map with his stalkers. There's no planetary, so this is going to get taken out pretty quickly, pretty easily. Mass Stalker Tempest will be the answer to what Gumio is showing here. I am not quite sure if it's the correct answer, but it definitely is an answer. So we're gonna see these stalkers being uh, being cornered. I wonder if there's a... There is a there is a recall available here. So, might be helpful. Stalkers will need to recall. Yep. Gets the recall. And at the same time, this base is gonna go down as well. These Hellions uh, turned into Hellbats. So oh, we'll be able to... One of these probes in the dying second here. Base is still going to go down as well. Unit lost still heavily in favor of Gumiho, but he needs to be careful because he's losing base after base. There's a big blink stalk count here on the bottom. That's the problem if you don't have that many battle cruisers. Battle cruisers also function as a way to fight off harassment and to harass themselves. But without them, you're not actually going to be that strong. Right now, 155 supply for Zest, 147 for Gumiho. It's nice that he's up in the resources lost, but if you're not actually mining more than your opponent, and you've been mining of five, six bases this entire game, and your opponent has been mining off of eight with a higher work count, then yeah, it's going to suck for you. This base also is gonna get taken out. There's one more orbital over here. A couple of tanks will be able to... Oh, Focus fire out of Zest will be able to get two of these battle cruisers. Another battle cruiser will go down here as well. That's a bad bling because a couple of tanks are set up here. All of these stalkers are gonna go down and um, yeah, no more gas income here for Zest. No, not a single gas income here for Zest. He has a crap ton of air units somewhere. Okay, they're all over here. I'm not quite sure if he should even be attacking, my friend. You're out mining your opponent again. You still have 1,600 minerals in the bank. You just require some gas. You need to be real careful here if you're Zest, by the way. Real careful if you're Zest. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of disruptors here to deal with these stores. I really wouldn't mind it. These stalkers are just getting uh, as much value as they can. Plus the vehicle weapons finally on the way. Tempest Void Ray Army is here... Uh, Trying to stop the harass of these Hellions. A new Nexus gets built here on top. These two gases are taken, which means that the gas mining now resumes here for Zest. Kumiho... Uh, is Kumiho aware of that bottom left base? Oh, yes, he is. He's, he recently scanned it because he saw the gas. I thought he was going to go there, but he's going to go there with his cars. Yeah. He's going to lose a lot of these cars to the Tempest, to the Void Race. To some of the stalkers as well. Now the battle cruisers are trying to run in. Zest somehow knows this. So I feel the amount of time Zest has actually been in position for battle cruisers without really spotting them has been extremely high. If this battle cruiser squad goes in, that could be a huge deal because there's not that many workers for Zest. This is the only base he has remaining mining. It's the only base that has gas remaining mining for him. You could get gases here, of course, as well. He is building five workers at the time. I'll hear from the battle cruisers. This is going to be big. He needs to teleport away immediately. Towards the other side of the map he goes. Oh no. He I think Zest accidentally only recalled a bunch like seven, eight tempest, and that is going to cost Gumiho now because all of these void rays are going to be capable to just charge up on these battle cruisers. Battle cruisers go down. Gumio is a little bit too slow with these stores. Stores are not into the correct mode either yet. There we go. I think that's the 250 millimeter cannon that's being used right now. Absolutely ripping through um, these uh, these air units. I am not quite sure if, if Zest can just straight up win this fight. Stores are really powerful. You shouldn't underestimate that. There's a battle cruiser on the other side of the map. There's two battle cruisers on the other side of the map, but. 
the second guy saw his friend get slaughtered and was like, you know what, guys, I think I should hide in the corner a little bit more. Uh, the game is close, especially when you look at the supply, but I am not quite sure if a single Thor is going to cut it against eight Tempest. Three Thors still remain, one Battlecruiser still remains. GG gets called as Zest, after a miraculous hold, manages to take out Gumio here on Romanticide. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you all next time for a new video. Bye bye.